Today, we're talking about green screens and how to utilize them as a YouTuber. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So it is the first video of 2020, and today we're gonna be talking about green screens. Now I know I covered green screens in a video last year on my channel, but that was specifically geared toward people who wanna use it for streaming. People who have a green screen behind them when they don't have a nice stream room, or something like that, when they just want the gameplay behind them, and you key it out inside of OBS, super easy. You don't have to worry about anything. But today, we're gonna be talking specifically about YouTubers. You don't really wanna use OBS to key yourself out if you're doing YouTube with the green screen behind you. You want the green screen there when you're in the editor so that you can use it to put memes behind you, put the gameplay behind you when you want, put your room behind you when you want. You can switch it out when you're editing. If you say something funny or make a funny reference, you're probably going to want to put that clip behind you. That makes for a really good video and you can't do that if you just key it out inside of OBS. You need the green screen inside the editor and today we're going to be talking about how to do that, the best ways to shoot, and I'm going to be talking about how to key out the green screen inside of Final Cut Pro. We're going to be talking about how to key out the green screen inside of DaVinci Resolve which is a free editing software and we're gonna be talking about how to key out the background into Adobe Premiere Pro but I'm also gonna be covering just some cool ideas that you can use when you're using a green screen and some tips to make your key look incredible so without further ado we're gonna jump right into it we're gonna start off by how to light your green screen now you'll notice that my green screen is fairly flatly lit and what I mean by that is it's mostly one color there's a little bit of shadow down here but we don't have to worry about that for the most part there's no harsh shadows on it that is because I have a second light here that I have on that I don't normally have on when I record videos and take a look at what the screen looks like if I shut this off. So this is what the screen would look like if I shot in my normal video lighting. Usually I have a bit of a shadow side on my face going on over here, but if I did that, half of my screen has gone very, very dark and this is going to be super difficult to key out and is probably not gonna look that great. So the first step when you're setting up a green screen is just make sure you have enough light to get a nice flat looking screen. If you've got a bunch of shadows like this, it's probably not gonna work too well for you. And if you're just starting out, as for the the type of green screen you need to get you don't have to spend a ton of money you can actually go out and just buy some green fabric from the fabric store try to make sure it's a really bright green and not a dark green that would look the best or you can buy a real green screen from Amazon there's pop-up green screens that aren't too expensive that I'll put a link down in the description I'll put a link for the Elgato green screens this is specifically the one that mounts on your ceiling and pulls down but they've got ones that pull up from the ground from Elgato and those are really good but you don't need to spend the money you can go out grab some green fabric as long as it's a nice bright green and not super Super dark. And then the one tip I can give you for when you're actually setting up the green screen is make sure it is as far behind you as it can be without your arms kind of going off the screen. Obviously, you need the whole green screen to be behind you where your arms aren't sticking off the side. My arm kind of goes off over here, but that's fine. I didn't really set this up to look good. It's just kind of for testing. But for you, I'd try to make sure that your entire body stays inside the green screen and push it back as far as you can. The reason you want to push it back is because you don't want your shadow on the green screen. You'll notice if I move my hand here, I've actually got the green screen fairly far back away from me and if I get my hand close to it you'll see all the shadows that appear on the screen you do not want these shadows around your arm you can take as much time as you want lighting and adding lights but if you sit close to it you're going to get shadows like this and this is not a good look this is going to be very hard for the keyer to key out so once you have your green screen set up you have it lit beautifully you have your video shot it is time to begin editing and keying out the green so we're going to be starting in DaVinci Resolve I'm going to show you how to key out the green screen in DaVinci Resolve it is a completely free editor that you can download in the description, I'll leave a link to DaVinci Resolve. It's an amazing software that I highly recommend to anybody looking for a free editor. But then we're gonna be switching over to Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna show you how to key out green if you edit in Final Cut Pro. This is the editor I would probably recommend if you are on a Mac and have a little bit of a budget. And then finally, we're gonna be keying out inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. I know there's a lot of people out there that edit inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. And I'm gonna put the timestamps on the screen now for all three of those editors. But before you go to one of these timestamps below, if you are keying out inside of DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut, make sure you watch the video to the end because after I show you how to key out inside of Premiere Pro, we're gonna be talking about some awesome techniques that you can use with your green screen that are gonna make people watching your video go, whoa, how did he do that? Techniques that people like Laserbeam use when he uses green screens, some awesome stuff. So make sure you stick around to check that out after we key out inside of Premiere Pro. But now you can jump to whatever timestamp you want for whatever keyer you need, and then watch the video for some awesome techniques. All right, so like I said, first up is DaVinci Resolve, the editor that is completely free. There's a link down in the description, once again, if you'd like to download this. But right here, I've got a DaVinci Resolve project with just our green screen clip inside here and I'm going to drag it into the edit tab here we're just going to lay it onto the timeline here's where you'd cut up your footage and kind of lay it out however you 
want, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we select our clip here, and then we're going to jump down here to the Fusion tab. So once you're in Fusion, you're going to see you've got the Media In node and the Media Out node, so make sure you've got the Media In node selected, and now we need to add a new node in between those. So the quickest way to do that is to hit Shift and then Spacebar. That is going to bring up your Select Tool menu, and in this little text box area down here, you just want to search Keyer. Once you search Keyer, you're going to see all the different keyers you have. Most of them do the same thing or key out various different kinds of colors. We are going to use the Ultra Keyer. That is the one that I like to use. So go ahead and click on Ultra Keyer and then just hit Add, and you'll see that it adds the Ultra Keyer on the line in between Media In and Media Out. So if you select the Ultra Keyer here and you go over to your Inspector, you'll see where it says Background Color, and then you've got the little Color Picker eyedropper thing. So you want to click on that and you want to hold down. It's not just a click and then move over to the color. You want to click and hold, and you want to drag over to whatever color you want. So the green screen right here, and you just want to let go, and then it's going to remove the green. So you'll see it immediately does a pretty good job of removing the green. And to be honest, you could leave it just like this if you really want to speed up your editing, and it's going to look fairly good. But if you do want to mess around with it, there's a bunch of little stuff you can do. You can mess around with the matte separation down here, the background correction down here. You can move these sliders. You can come up here and click on these buttons up here, like the matte. And here you can go ahead and shrink and grow. The contract and expand slider here will add more back into the scene or take some out. There's all sorts of stuff that you can mess with. If you mess with the little threshold slider, you'll see more or less gets keyed out. You can mess with it up here as well. If you click into this little menu here, you can mess around with spill suppression. So spill suppression is taking away the little bit of green that might be left over on your skin or on your microphone or something. So you can mess around with the spill suppression to take some of that away. But there's all sorts of settings you can edit to get a really good looking key. But to be honest, you can also just leave it right after you select the color. If you want to speed up your workflow, head back into the edit tab and you'll see that boom, you've got your stuff keyed out and ready to go. You can continue editing your video with the green screen keyed out behind it. So if you make a reference or a funny joke, you just want to have that pop up down here on the video one layer, and then you are above it on the video two layer, just as simple as that. But now we're going to go ahead and move on to Final Cut Pro. All right, so here we are inside of Final Cut Pro. We've got a project here with our green screen footage already here on the timeline, and now it is time to begin keying out. So whenever you want to key out, you want to come over to your effects over here. You want to make sure you're in the all video and audio effects, and down here in the search bar, you just want to type in keyer, and you're going to see an effect pop up called just keyer. You can then click that and drag it onto your footage here, and depending on your settings and footage, it might do a great job right away, but if it doesn't, you can come down here into the color selection area, and you'll You'll see you've got this little graph circle thing and you can move these lines around to select the color that you want so for the green screen we can move these around into the green area until we get a look that we want there's tons of settings in pretty much any editor for making your key look amazing and it's really just depends on how much time you want to spend on it so once you've got your color selected you can also come down here and you'll see another drop down called spill suppression like we discussed before this will take out just kind of the leftover green that might be in reflections and things like that so you can mess around with the tint and the saturation of the spill suppression and then inside the matte tools you'll see the same shrink and expand settings to maybe get rid of a little bit of a green halo around you or add some back you can also soften the edges a little bit if you want to kind of blur out your edges to make it look a little bit better there's all sorts of settings to play around with in here and then just like that you are all done with your key and for adding the video clips behind you it is a little bit different than DaVinci Resolve considering this is a magnetic timeline and this is the way that I have found best to do it so for your green screen footage you just want to go ahead and right click and hit lift from storyline and you'll notice that it will pull it up off of the main storyline at the bottom so you can put all of your green screen clips and your reference clips on that little storyline at the bottom and then your green screen footage over the top just magnetically attached to it so that anything underneath the clip right here is going to show up behind the green screen and it's just as simple as that so now let's move on to premiere pro now it's time for Premiere Pro. So here we are inside of a brand new Premiere Pro project. We've just got this clip of me in front of the green screen here. So now it is time to begin keying this out. So there's a couple ways we can do this. First things first, head over to the effects window and we're gonna type in key. So if we scroll down here, we're gonna see a bunch of different types of keys. We've got ultra key and we've got color key. Those are the two made ones. And we're gonna start with ultra key. This one can look really good and can work really well if you've got the settings right and if you've got your screen lit really well. Mine might not be lit perfectly for it, but we will see. So you'll see you got key color over here. You can click and you can select the green. And just like that, it removes a good chunk of the green, but we've still got a little bit over here on the edges. So if you go over here where it says composite and select alpha channel, you can see that everything that's black is going to be gone. Everything that's white is going to stay. And you can come down here to matte generation and you can mess around with these sliders here to make everything the way you need it. So we can make me 
all white messing with a couple of these like that and then you can make the screen blacker by messing with a couple of these other sliders and it doesn't look like we'd be able to get it perfect with the um, ultra key so another way we can do this in a way that I like to do it if you cannot get your screen well lit is to grab the color key effect just like this and it allows us to layer different keys so this first one we can go and select the green that's like right next to us just like that and go ahead and up the color tolerance and you're gonna see a lot of it disappears and it's not gonna look great but just wait so we're gonna go ahead and up it just like that and you see you got these little craggy edges so we can go ahead and thin out our edge by about uh, let's say negative three Oh, three instead of negative three. So we're going to thin out our edges and then maybe we can feather out our edges a little bit, kind of like that. Then we can go ahead and drop another instance of color key on here and then maybe select the kind of darker greens down here and go ahead and move up with those a little bit. That was way too much. Move up with those a little bit until they're gone. Let's say right about there and then do the same edge thin on this one and kind of the same feather of two on that one. And you see that already looks pretty good right here, but we got the green kind of around us, this little green haze just like that. So we can go ahead and add ultra key back on here and select our color as being green. And you'll see that ultra key will go ahead and take away that spill for us. So it's got spill suppression built in to ultra key. So you can just use the ultra key effect as a bit of a spill suppression. And there you go. You got an incredible looking key inside of Premiere Pro. If you want to mask off this little area that is not covered in the green screen, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. You can come up here to the opacity inside of your effects controls. Go ahead and click this little uh, pen tool to free draw a mask and we'll go ahead and draw a mask around everything that's inside the green screen just like that and now we are completely keyed out. I didn't cover how to mask in the other programs but it's pretty simple to mask. You can find it out yourself or look it up. It's very simple to do so. So now you've got free range to move your around you can move yourself down into the corner when you're playing the game just kind of like that and your gameplay will be behind you that is a very popular way to do this kind of effect and it's just that easy messing around with the position and the scale but another cool way of doing this is that if you're playing a game one of the techniques that I've seen a lot I see laser beam do it and it's a really cool effect that kind of blows people's minds when they're not thinking about it is when you're playing your game you want to have yourself down in the corner like I just showed you so let's go ahead and shrink us down move us down to the corner so let's say we've got some gameplay some call of duty some Fortnite going on on the screen right here we've got ourselves keyed onto it but we say something to the camera and you want to cut to full screen so if you cut to full screen you can grab a photo of your stream room without you in it so we're going to move me up to the video 2 layer just like that and we're going to drop the photo of my stream room in behind me and just like that you've got yourself sitting in your stream room but you're actually in front of a green screen so it looks like you don't have a green screen set up so when you're talking to the camera you've got your room behind you and then when it cuts to your game you've got the game behind you and people are like wait a minute how is he doing a green screen effect when he doesn't have a green screen. This is something that Laser Beam used to do. I haven't seen him do it in a little bit, I don't think, but it's a really cool effect that you can do to confuse people. And I think it's a pretty cool style to have in your YouTube videos, but that's pretty much it for this video. It is very easy to key out in all the editors I showed you, Premiere, DaVinci, Final Cut, whatever you edit in, you could be using a green screen and you don't even need a fancy one from Elgato. You can go get a green sheet, a green piece of fabric from a fabric store, anything like that, and set it up behind you. And as long as you light it well and key it properly, and your editor it's going to look fantastic but I hope you guys enjoyed this video the first video of the new year I want to cater a lot more of my videos to youtubers I've been focusing a lot on twitch streams and making twitch graphics and I want to start making more YouTube graphics like buttons sub buttons animated things like that and just a lot of video tutorials on how to shoot better YouTube videos I think that would be a really cool way to start off the year and start pushing towards helping out the YouTube side of people more than just the streaming side of people I'm just now noticing as well as I'm shooting this this angle that I set up for this video when the green screen is not pulled down looks pretty cool so I might shoot this angle a little bit as well but I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.